OK, so we should start seeing some participants trickling through now, which is fantastic. Hello, everybody, and good morning. Welcome to our Bruntwood Works Spark session, which is today all about becoming a trustee. Now, a few of you may have been thinking throughout this period, you know, there's so much that's happening in the world. How can I make a positive difference and how can I use my skills? to do that in a really meaningful way that adds value to an organisation. And hopefully, trusteeship may be the answer. If you're thinking of that, today we're going to be talking about all of the various elements, what to expect, what a trustee role even is, what charities look for, you know, what skills you can bring to the table. We're covering all of it. And hopefully, if that wets your whistle and makes you uh, keen to get involved with it as well, um, we have some signposts as well as to uh, roles that you might be able to, to fill. So it should be a really good, really well-rounded session. For those of you who are wondering why we're doing this, um, Bruntwood Works are a property organisation who create and develop beautiful workspaces and retail and leisure space as well. Now for us, it's not just about filling those spaces. It's about creating a beautiful community within that of organisations that can really add value to each other. And one of the ways that we're really keen to do that is by supporting our local communities and our local charity organisations. So for us, this is a perfect topic and we're really thrilled as well to welcome some panellists that are both part of the Bruntwood family, but also um, people that we work with as well, both in terms of city partnerships and in terms of charities as well. So if I could ask you all to introduce yourself, that would be wonderful. Um, Justin, I'm going to start with you because you are right to me on my screen. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Justin Watson. I'm the director of Young Manchester, uh, a partner of Bruntwood, uh, and I'm also a trustee of the YPF Trust, a national charity, and a non-exec director of Greater Manchester Poverty Action as well. Amazing. Thank you. Catherine. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a solicitor, so I actually deal with charity law as part of my work. Um, but I am a trustee of a number of charities as well. Um, I'm a trustee of the Oglesby Charitable Trust, which is um, a charity that, that um, is a, a grant making charity, which means that we give money to other charities and other organisations. Um, I'm also a trustee of the Portico Library, which is very different because that's um, a private library in Manchester and um, it's a, an employee, so we have a lot of um, uh, issues, not issues, but, but we're running a business effectively, so very different. Amazing, thank you so much. Victoria, can I hand over to you? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. I'm Victoria Braddock, and I'm the Director of International Marketing at Marketing Manchester in my day job, and I'm a trustee of Hideout Youth Zone, which is a brand new £6 million youth zone in Gorton in Manchester, supporting the young people across Manchester. And I'm also um, a member of the uh, Regional Advisory Board for the National Trust in the North. Wonderful. Jen? Hi Heather, thank you. Um, I'm Jen Atkins, I'm the People Director at Bruntwood um, and I'm also a HR trustee at the Hideout Youth Zone um, alongside Victoria. Wonderful stuff, thank you very much. And Dan? Morning everyone, can you, can you hear me Heather? Is that I right? can, perfectly. Fantastic, cool. Uh, my name's Dan, I am uh, a student at London School of Economics but alongside that I'm also chair of a non-profit called Youth Politics UK and for today I have got my trustee hat on because I'm a trustee uh, for the organisation charity that Justin works for, Young Manchester. Um, so yeah, delighted to be here. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And it's so lovely, as I said before, to have all of these different perspectives around the topic of trusteeship, but also to hear that about your day job and what you're doing outside of that as well, because something I'm really keen for us to come on to a little bit later is how those two intertwine and, and make for a successful thing for people's own personal development as well. Now, for those who are watching and maybe are completely new to the topic, I think a good place to start would be to say, you know, what is a trustee? What does the role look like? What does it entail? So Catherine, can I, uh, can I hand over the baton to you to, uh, to give us a little summary? 
Yes, of course. Um, so being a trustee, basically the trustees run the charity um, or that they, they are effectively the board. So if you think of an analogy with a company, um, the trustees will be the company board. Um, charities vary hugely. So you have very, very tiny charities. You have huge charities like Oxfam and um, Save the Children, all those large charities. Um, obviously the larger charities will have um, a staff and they will have um, the likes of Justin, so um, paid chief executive and employees who will actually do the, the day to day running of the charity. But there will always be a board of trustees, however large or small the charity, who will be the people who make the final decisions. Perfect. So they're almost steering the ship and giving yeah. direction. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Perfect overview. Now, a few of you mentioned when you were giving your introductions before that you were a trustee yourself. Um, it'd be great if you could tell me a little bit more about your experience as a trustee so far. I mean, you know, what made you want to do it? How have you found it? Um, Justin, um, can I uh, can I start with with yourself? Yeah, sure. So I mean, I've worked in the uh, charity sector for about oh, 20 years now uh, and have, have been mainly doing that through paid in, uh, paid roles. And it's only very recently, actually, in the last year that I've, I've got into being a trustee at the same time. And it felt like a natural progression, actually, in terms of passions and areas of interest and being able to support through my experience, through my day job and translating that into other organizations that, that fitted the bill. So in terms of the, the YPF Trust, which is a national organization looking at supporting children and young people's work, that felt like a natural connection between the local work I do in Young Manchester and my previous roles. I uh, used to work for Oxfam and then Save the Children before that. Um, so it felt like a, a good kind of development opportunity and, and also uh, a chance for me to share some of those skills. And similarly with uh, Greater Manchester Poverty Action as well, really, it was about how can I use the experiences I've got, um, but also build more connections across the city and across Greater Manchester as well. So Amazing. So it's something that you've got things from as well as being able to give yeah, absolutely. And I think there's, there's things you get in terms of, a, you know, the experience of being a trustee and learning. I think one of the things that I've learned in the last year um, has been that network of other trustees and learning from them. I think that's been hugely valuable and building connections across different parts of the city. I'm quite lucky to work with a brilliant board uh, through Young Manchester and have connections there with Dan and others. But also in my trustee role as well, I get to make connections uh, and get different experiences of different people doing completely different jobs which is hugely valuable I think. Oh that's fantastic and you work very closely with Dan as well so so Dan I think it's a good good opportunity to pass over to you and uh, tell me a little bit more about how you found it so far. Awesome thanks so much uh, yeah no so as you can probably tell I don't look like your your classic young uh, classic trustee but I think that's the first point to start off with I think that trusteeship is thankfully changing which will be a huge benefit to the charity sector overall with, with greater diversity there which is fantastic um, but yeah so I'm only 19 years old and so you know I've, I originally when, when looking for trustee so positions. I, I mean, I saw a lot of my peers who had been engaged with the charity sector and youth sector for quite a while um, start to start to join trustee boards. And I thought, OK, this looks interesting. But they were sort of, you know, mid 20s, been in it for six or seven years um, and, you know, really were able to add value that way um, through their extensive experiences. And so I had a lot of people sort of, I think, sort of encouraging me to take that step, which was fantastic and I was engaged with something called the Young Trustees Movement um, which is a movement uh, designed to empower young people to actually become trustees and acknowledge oh, wow. that you do have skills there to actually uh, benefit boards which is fantastic so my experience had been I founded a non-profit organization based here in Manchester uh, called Youth Politics which works to engage young people through democracy um, and empower them through democratic engagement which has just been such an amazing journey and what I hadn't realized is that through that journey I had actually gained so many skills which I'm able to use now um, you know whether that's strategic direction whether that's linked with funders um, whether that's 
loads of partners across Manchester, um, whether that's again corporate or you know young people. And these are these were all things I think charity uh, charity boards were, were looking for, and charities were like, hang on, that would be a wonderful asset to the team. Um, so you know, I, I think what I'd encourage everyone to do is if they don't think that you know if they think, hang on, what do I what could I possibly add? I was in the exact same position. Then I actually wrote down, you know, what sort of skills I, I could offer and then tried to match that with the charity. Um, and, Ideal. you know, the great thing to do is I waited for quite a while. So there are a few, you know, great positions that came up just, just weren't right for me. And it's often, you know, just matching yourself with, with the charity. And then I got a text message one day saying, Dan, you have to check this out. If if you don't go for it, I don't know who will. And that was the, the Young Manchester gig, which was just amazing because there's two sort of passions there young people and my city and I thought you know what's what's better there and it's been a yeah it's been a fantastic journey oh I'm so pleased and it's really lovely as well that you've been involved in the charity world and then you're able to get involved in it in a, in a slightly different way as well and um, you touched just a, a little bit there about you know your love for the city and being able to to give back to the local community and um, and I think that's really fantastic as well. I'd love to use this as an op opportunity to, to go to Victoria, because obviously your day role is uh, Marketing Manchester. It's letting everybody know how wonderful the city is. Yeah, I'm still slightly in awe of Dan's Dan's capacity to be a trustee at 19. I doff my cap to you, Dan. You've, you, you're getting some great experience already. Oh, yeah, my day job is promoting Manchester to the world. So it, it was really important to me to look at some of the areas within Manchester that probably not doing as well as as they should be doing and okay. some of the young people that were supporting at hideout I want to be able to see them you know having a perspective that is beyond Manchester and looking you know they're the next generation of entrepreneurs or solicitors and and I think for me although it's a bit of a cliche it is about giving something back and it's understanding that journey that some of those young people will be on battling with confidence and with the lockdown and everything that we've had so for me I found it a really rewarding um, opportunity and and being in the room with the other trustees and learning about other things that you know you cover such a wide realm of anything from investment strategies to safeguarding everything that I don't do in my day job which doesn't feel like a job at times when you're just talking about Manchester all day long so <laughs> so yeah for me it's about also making sure that everyone's part of the opportunity and I think that's what that's why I got involved with with hideout and why I wanted to make a difference with with some of those um, opportunities that you can bring to some of those young people. They're all so full of energy and enthusiasm. And I'm sure they'll be following uh, Daniel's path as well, chomp, chomping at his heels in the next couple of years. So for me, it's all about helping people to be part of what's going on in Manchester because we're just absolutely you know, flying with where we're at, but everybody needs to be included in that and given the same opportunities. So that's what motivated me to get involved with Hideout. Oh, that's wonderful, Victoria. And it's really lovely as well that you were able to kind of look strategically at where the gaps are and where you could fill and add best value there. So that, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, Catherine and Jen, you guys are obviously from more of a corporate background. Um, compared to some of our other panels that have started. So Jen, can I pass over to you to tell me a little bit about your role as a trustee? Because it's fairly recent that you've uh, that you started this journey, isn't it? Yeah, so um, I mean, Brumpwood have partnered with Onside and Manchester Youth Zones for a number of years. So I've been I've been really familiar with the Youth Zone and the work that they do. And in the past, I've had experience of going into Youth Zone and doing CV mentoring or you know working with the working with the kids on um, interview skills and and sort of building um, development plans. But when I found out about Hideout Youth Zone, which is a brand new um, brand new Youth Zone, it's an absolutely amazing facility. Um, I got introduced to Adam who's the CEO there and he told me about the opportunity to, to become a trustee and it was a no-brainer for me because um, a, I, I really wanted to do something else. You know, I love my job, um, and I, I think I was at a point in my life where I've got um, my my little girl's just going to school, and I was thinking, right, I need something else now. I want to give back. I want to do something with my spare time. Um, gives me some more challenge and variety. Widens my circle. Widens my network. But also gives me a different perspective and different sort of you know meet people with different backgrounds. Um, and when I met when I met Adam, I was completely bought into both him and also the work that they're doing at Hyde. 
weed out um, and just wanted to be part of it really. So it, I think for me, it really, it, it was a continuation of what I do in my role. So I love developing people. I love creating that sort of experience and culture that's a great place to work. Um, I love upskilling people and I knew that I could bring those strengths and skills to the hideout. Um, and so that's why it just it felt like, a, I guess, a natural. Um, and I was, I, was so, I was so grateful for the opportunity. But yeah, I'm so glad that I've done it because I'm really enjoying it, even though I have only been there for about um, five months. But, you know, it's just been, it's just been brilliant so far. Oh, that's lovely. It's, it's lovely that you've started in, um, you know, making waves and, and doing so much. And, you know, very soon we'll all be able to meet up and deliver things virtually and do your first trustee meetings all in person, I think will be will be really exciting. Yeah, I did. Um, I did. I actually did an SLT workshop with them last week um, and, and a big, massive, um, safe obviously COVID secure space um, and it was just it was just absolutely brilliant to, to meet and get to know the team a little bit better and I think it's really interesting because you can I, I'm actually developing new skills you know you have to be really commercial there's there's definitely yeah. there's there's a lack of funding and resources so you have to think about things more creatively than you might challenge yourself to do in the corporate world where you've got budgets and you've got funding and um, so you really do have to get creative with your resources <laughs> I think has been uh, has been really interesting oh wonderful thank you so much I'm glad it's been so positive and Catherine uh, can, can I hand over to yourself because um you know, you've mentioned that you're trustee of the portico. How have you found that? Yeah, I mean, I th I think um, as everyone else has said, it's it's just um, fascinating to find out about lots of other things. I think if you if if you work in a fairly large organisation, you know your little bit. But you know, I I know very little about HR, for example, or. Um, the, fi the financial side of it um, but as a trustee you see everything um, and um, you get involved you can get involved as much or as little as you want to really um, but there is a lot of opportunity and I, I, I have to say that I think I've learned a lot more than I've given by being a trustee I think I think the um, opportunities for um, widening your horizons are limitless really and it, it, it's great to move into something that's slightly different to your day job as well. Oh it's lovely to hear yeah. that there are those brilliant personal development opportunities as well and it's the perfect uh, situation where you're, you are able to give something back but, but get something from it as well. I mean Justin from a charity's perspective what do you tend to look for in a good trustee? I think the, the critical thing is, is passion and enthusiasm. And, and if you've got that, then everything else is completely doable. And I think that's the first thing that we would look for when we've done recruitment. Uh, and certainly when uh, the recruitment we did where we, we got Dan on board, mm -hmm. Dan's passion and enthusiasm shone through right to the fore. Um, I think it, it's obviously useful to have a range of skills on a board and a range of experiences. So people are bringing professional expertise if it's HR, finance, communications, they're all really, really important. Um, and I would also say that lived experience can be really, really useful as well. Whether that's you're a young person or maybe you used to be a young person or maybe you, you've engaged in, because uh, obviously the youth and play sector is one element, but there's about 4,000 community and voluntary organisations in Manchester working oh, on a wow. range of issues. Many are really, really small, working on really tiny budgets, um, covering a range of issues. So there will be an organisation there that might fit with your passions and interests, but also some of your own experiences that you might have had or family members might have that you'll bring that kind of personal commitment to the charity. But for me, if you're bringing passion and you're bringing enthusiasm, and that is absolutely the great starting point uh, and you don't need to have had any experiences of doing uh, you know being a trustee or a thing before uh, there are organizations like young trustees movement like young manchester and others who can provide support and training to make sure that you you can you get the right support and the right skills in place to be able to do it oh that's wonderful because i guess if you don't know much about it the prospect of becoming a trustee and all of the responsibilities and obligations which um we'll, we'll go on to in a second but that could probably seem quite daunting and quite you know quite nerve-wracking for people putting themselves forward 
Yeah, I think it can be. It can, on, on the face of it, it can look a little bit scary, especially when you look through the kind of legal responsibilities. There's a long list of things that you're actually, you know, responsible for. Um, and yeah, as I say, we'll get onto those. I think the majority of those are really positive things. They're about bringing your skills and experience to a charity and, and you know, holding the organisation to account. And that's, you know, one of Dan's jobs. Dan is effectively my boss and has to hold me to account and make sure that I'm doing the right things for young people in Manchester. Um, so yeah, it can be a little bit scary, um, but actually I think it's it's really, really exciting. As others have said, you, you get a real insight into what's actually happening in Manchester. Manchester can seem like a brilliant, incredible growing city, but we also know it's a city with huge challenges and can be an, an incredibly unequal city at times. So being able to bring skills and experiences to try and, you know, level the playing field or, you know, ensure, and certainly from our perspective and from Hideout, ensure that all young people have access to everything that Manchester has to offer, I think is really, really exciting. And being able to play a role in that, I think, is a great opportunity. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. And that's a really good op opportunity, I think, Catherine. We, we spoke before about the, you know, the legal obligations and the responsibilities of, you know, what, what should people expect if they are a trustee? Because, you know, we've already covered that you get a lot out of it. It's a really rewarding thing, as we mentioned, from a personal development perspective, but also in terms of, you know, the way that you do give back to that community. But that does come with some responsibilities. So what can people expect? Yeah, it's, I mean, it is a very responsible role, and um, I think um, it, it's not a role to go into lightly. Um, basically, as we said, the trustees are the people who run the charity, and they are ultimately responsible for it. Mm -hmm. So the book stops with them. If, if, if Justin runs off with all the charity's money, Dan has got a responsibility there because he should have been making sure that there were controls and checks and balances in place to stop him doing that. Um, and, you know, he can't say, well, it's nothing to do with me because as a trustee, he's responsible. Um, and trustees have legal obligations to um, look after their charitable money, their, their charitable assets to run the charity properly, um, and to make sure that everything they're doing is charitable. Um, so there, so it is um, a serious position. Um, there are responsibilities with it, but I don't think you should be put off by those because um, that's the position with anything, really. If you're, if, if you're going to do anything seriously, um, you have to do it properly. And... Um, as long as you follow the rules, um, it is very, very rewarding. Fantastic. Uh, is, there, is there anywhere that you could point people in the direction of to read a little bit more of around the obligations and responsibilities? Yeah, I mean, the, the charities in, in, in England are covered, uh, are, are governed by the Charity Commission, okay. who, uh, which is a government body. And I mean, charity law, um, dates right back to the um, the reign of Elizabeth the first and oh, 1601 wow. the original charities act came in and everything is is really based on that even now and the charity commission are the people who police charities and make sure they're doing the right things they have a website and I have to say that the guidance on their website is really good um, okay really comprehensive really helpful in particular they have pamphlets on um becoming a charity and what the um responsibilities are and i would suggest if you're thinking of doing it have a look at that to start with you won't there's nowhere better than that to start with oh that's really good advice because like you said before it's really important to go in with your eyes open and you know I'm, I, I'm conscious as we said before you know the obligations and responsibilities can make it seem a little bit daunting in that you know as you've said you're um ultimately responsible for the direction of of the charity um is it a case where you should wait to get to a certain level before you apply to a trustee 
or is it a case where you know however much experience you've got you're, you're able to add value in some capacity this is a question for all of you really uh, from your experiences being on on boards I would say that everyone can add value um, we've all got experiences different experiences um, and we're all going to learn um, so as long as you're willing to learn and you're willing to make a bit of an effort um, I think I think anyone can contribute I mean obviously charities need certain people for example all charity boards need someone who knows about finance so if um, they're looking for someone who has the financial qualifications or, or financial requirements um, they're going to have to look for someone who can offer those particular skills but a lot of the time I think charity boards need people who either have the lived experience as Justin says or um, have some particular way that they can contribute which different there will be something out there for everybody where everybody could help I think that's a really important point as well, that it doesn't have to be linked to what you do during your day job. And indeed, if you do have a day job, it's about being able to, to commit time, energy and effort. So you don't have to think that you have to be at a certain point in your career. You know, you could just be starting out your career. You, you know, Dan Dan's 19. You could only work in the home. You know, you don't have to be in a senior position with a bunch of qualifications to be able to do this. If you've got the time, the commitment and the passion and lived experience that you can bring to the table. And I think a lot of the time it's challenging what's happening, which is really important. It's learning, listening and then getting involved is, is as important as any qualifications that you've got or certificates or pieces of paper, you shouldn't let that put you off. If you've got the time and the passion for the cause, then you should put in an application to be a trustee. Definitely. And there's one there's one other point, right, which is, I know we're talking sort of about it being quite daunting about how many responsibilities you have. And I did initially have that. And then I met the rest of the board. I mean, you are not there with those obligations just for you as an individual, right? It's important to know what you are signing up to. But you're going to have people there with, with experiences from, you know, all over. Like, like Catherine said, you're going to have, you know, financial experts in the room. Um, and you will, you know, sometimes, I'm not a massive fan, but sometimes they do, you know, charities do actually give a specification about what they're looking for in that particular recruitment drive. Um, I always say, even if they, they say that, just go for it. Um, even if you don't have that, because you, know, you might have something else to offer, um, especially as a young person. Um but yeah, you, it won't just be, you know, you with all those, those don't get, you're going to have such an incredible team. And I think that's the most, I've only met our trustee board online. I've not known any different. I've only been a trustee for a few months, but that's sort of been one of the, you know, one of the big highlights is, is just being how incredibly supportive everyone else is. And you will get people hopefully mentoring you like I have um, teaching you the ropes, which has been wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful, Dan. And I guess it's as well, it's it's one of those where sometimes, um, you know, you a, a charity might not know that they need you until they meet you. And then, you know, everything falls into place and it works beautifully. I mean, if you were to kind of think practically about your own skills and what you could bring to the table um something that, that that i was thinking about was you know we spoke before about imposter syndrome you know maybe being the thing that can hold people back from putting themselves forward for, for this sort of role i mean jen from your your experience in in people and hr have you got any tips around how people can almost self-assess what strengths they have and what values they might be able to bring to the party yeah, I mean, I think listening to to Dan is a lesson for all of us to have some self-belief and to, you know, I think, Dan, you mentioned that you drew up a list of your strengths. Um, I think having that constant self-awareness and actually taking time to reflect on what strengths you have, what values you have, what you're passionate about, you know, we don't always stop and think about that. We kind of just, we kind of just go, go, go. So I think um, if anybody wants to continue to develop, whether personally or professionally, you've, you've got to be 
you've got to be self-aware and you've got to be continually thinking about your strengths and it's it's hard to do especially um you know it's hard to I guess have that objective view of yourself but you can do it and there's lots of tools out there and exercises that can help you do it I mean some people say refresh your CV every year because it's a really helpful exercise just to show you what you've achieved and actually what you know what you can offer and I I am an absolute advocate of that um but yeah draw up a list of your strengths or um ask your ask the people that know you best, ask your family, ask your friends, ask your colleagues um, to give you, you know, the, the top three things that they appreciate about you or, um, yeah, or, or even just, you know, having a look at the kind of adverts that are out there for, for trustee roles and then really thinking about examples of how your strengths meet those criteria um, and how what you've done has actually, you know, w- would actually align with that. But, and there's, there's also personality tests and, and everything else that you can do. But the most important thing is self-belief and confidence. You know, we are all, we all have imposter syndrome. I have not met one person. I've not met anybody, whether they're CEO or whatever, who doesn't have imposter syndrome and doesn't think am I good enough um and you've just you've got to challenge yourself and push yourself forward um and and you know hopefully work with a supportive team that that will continue to mentor and develop you as well um but yeah I would just say absolutely go for it and in terms of preparation just self self self-reflection is key um and feedback Oh, I love that. And also that seems like a really nice exercise to do in terms of building your own confidence outside of this trustee conversation. Yeah, for anybody, all human beings, you know, if we, we it's, it's just about being the best version of yourself, isn't it? And you, I think we put so much focus and energy into our work and into looking after everybody else. But, you know, even journaling 10 minutes a day and just just think about what went well today and what you're grateful for. And, and yeah, I think... I think confidence and and self-belief is something that we can all probably, you know, I'm I'm listening, I need to listen to my own advice as well. We we all, we all could be better, couldn't we? And uh, we've all got different strengths to bring. Everybody's different. That's the thing. No, you're absolutely right. And it's harder to do when it is yourself and when you are trying to be objective about something so subjective, you know, it's one of those, you could easily do it about your friend or partner and list 10 good qualities or strengths they can bring to the table off the bat so I think that's a a really a really lovely thing for for us to kind of everybody watching this should absolutely do that and as you mentioned before everybody you know it's about lived experience and it's about people bringing different things to the table and one of the things that I've seen a lot um online and in having conversations um with with yourselves all individually as well is how important diversity and different experiences are to a board structure and how that can really add value to a charity i mean i'd be keen to to hear your thoughts on it from experience and and also what what we can be doing to get it better yeah i think um yeah i, I don't mind sort of given my view on it first but um there's so much evidence out there isn't there that diverse teams are more effective they're higher performance it's not just the right thing to do but it is also the right thing to do creating a more diverse and inclusive workforce is a win-win for everybody it creates a more fair and equal society but it also it is also better for business you get more creativity people contribute different ideas and perspectives it's more more innovative um and you're representing your customer base. You're representing, you know, the, the people that you're working for, whether that be whether whether you're a charity or whether you're private sector or whether you're um, public sector. It doesn't really matter. It's it's all the same. And so charities, in my experience, have exactly the same agenda and objectives as as most organisations, which is DNI is a really really is a really really big um, big area of focus for them for all the right reasons and they do want diverse boards of trustees and um, because they do see the value that that brings um, and with you know with diversity brings um you know brings better better conversations um i think it's difficult i think we've we've sort of talked a little bit around how people get opportunities and see those opportunities and a lot of the times i know you know at, at case in point the reason I'm a trustee is because I knew someone who knew someone um, and therefore it, it can 
make the challenge of diversity more difficult, I guess, in terms of really widening the pool and making sure that, tr that charities are, are able to give everybody access to those opportunities and, and widen the net. And that probably comes down a little bit to the fact that they're not resource rich either. So they don't have massive recruitment teams. They don't, you know, they, well, they don't have a recruitment team most of the time. Um, you know, they don't have the, the capability of getting the word out there really widely and making sure that they can therefore attract diverse candidates. So it is more challenging, um, but I think it can it can still be done. Um, absolutely. And I think through through that kind of um, selection process, but also, um, you know, through the way that they do, I, they do market themselves as well, they can get diversity. Um, but yeah, I guess um, it's it's definitely a challenge, but it's something that in my experience, and, and, and you know, it'd be great to hear from Justin on this, that charities are very focused on. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think we know that Manchester is a hugely diverse and inclusive city overall, but that we don't see that always reflected in the leadership of the city. And that's that's not just the voluntary sector, that's across the board. Um, uh, there is a lot of work being done by individual organisations and by, you know, groups and collective organisations in the voluntary sector and other places to try and increase those levels of diversity across a number of different areas. Um, uh, so yeah, and it is more tricky for those smaller organisations, and that's where I think linking up across networks and having organisations like like Bruntwood and Oglesby Charitable Trust, who can provide those connectors. We're doing some really great work with Oglesby Charitable Trust at the moment around supporting emerging leaders and, and leadership in smaller organisations. I think that kind of work is really really vital, and there's all there's almost that kind of brokering and, and connecting that needs needs to happen. Um, it's fantastic that we've got organisations like Hideout. One of, the things, one of the things I think is great about an organisation like Hideout is that it can support the smaller organisations within its kind of area and network, and we can build those connections. That's vital across the city. Um, so, yeah, we definitely need more diversity in boards. Uh, we should just be really open and honest about that. It's still, uh, you know, the majority of boards across the sector and across uh, youth and play sector are... Uh, are on the older age range they are very white so we need to be better at that I think um, and creating more opportunities like this to try and showcase how exciting being on a board is I think is, is really really important and you know and having people like Dan here who can talk to his peers and his colleagues and his friends as well to try and you know encourage and support more young people to be involved is really critical I think for us at Young Manchester. Can I just come in there as well, Heather? I think it's really important as well, talking about the imposter syndrome and actually getting involved in in trustee roles and charity roles. It was one of the things that drew me to the role that I do at the National Trust in that they actually put out an advert and they were looking for diversity because they didn't want, they wanted it to be representative of the, of the communities across the North. So it was one of the things that actually drew me to it. But, it, you know, at times it, you do have to put yourself out there and you do have to, you know, make sure that you, you have to think about, well, if I'm not willing to be a representative, then you can't sit back and complain about there being a lack of diversity in organisations mm -hmm. like the National Trust if you're also not willing to put yourself forward. And I think it's it's one of the challenges that you have in your head about, you know, you can't just sit back and go, well, they should have people from the BAME community, they should have young people, they should have the whole of society represented them go, but I'm not going to apply. <laughs> you know, you do have to push, push yourself forward and also recognise that in trying to do that, <coughs> excuse me, in trying to do that, some of these organisations, you will go to your for first board meeting and you might be the only person that's there that's, that's under 40, you might be the only person there from a certain background, you know, you have to challenge those those situations sometimes by putting yourself forward so that we do have boards that are more representative because if you let the imposter syndrome win, you'll mm -hmm. never change the boards yourself. So I think, and then it's looking for opportunities to bring other people on board with you. And as Jen says, you know, much as much as some opportunities are passed out because you know somebody, yeah. you can also bring greater diversity by 
speaking to some of your colleagues and your connections and going, hey, you need to be involved in this because you've got something to give. So I think it's also encouraging people from from different backgrounds and actually helping to push them into it because sometimes it's a big leap to make yourself. Oh, I love that. So it's almost like being a sponsor for others as well as uh, pushing yourself forward through it. That's fantastic. And you mentioned as well that kind of that first meeting that you would go to. And I think if people, again, aren't, um, haven't gone through that experience, might not know what to expect. But what would the interview process look like? Say you did watch this and think, do you know what, I could add real value as a trustee, and it's something I'd love to do. But kind of you know, trying to visualise what that might look like and what the process might look like as well. Um, is it just like a normal job interview? Uh, so when we've done it at Young Manchester and, and the experience that I've been in, in terms of going for trustee roles, uh, obviously it's, uh, as Catherine said, it's a really, it's a serious commitment. So there's that side of it, but it is also a voluntary commitment. So it shouldn't be an interrogation. <laughs> it should be uh, you know, quite informal, actually, uh, and certainly as an in kind of a recruiter going in and supporting my chair to do a recruitment process, we had a clear idea of what we wanted uh, in terms of, you know, skills and experiences and, and backgrounds, but also focusing that on that, that passion and that commitment. So we were, we, you do have to make an assessment because there is sometimes competitive processes. And actually, that's a positive thing if it is competitive process, because we're seeing more people who want to go for those positions. So it was great that we got lots of people interested in Young Manchester, for example. Um, But it should be uh, it should be a really, really straightforward and easy thing to do. So we have like an expression of interest form, for example, which is literally a page saying, why do you want to do this? And what do you think you could offer and what do you think you could get out of it? And that's it. Uh, and then inviting people to interview and we just have a bit of an informal chat we have some questions Uh, we had young people involved in our panels as well who were asking questions about from their perspectives which I think is really really important but at the end of the day it should be a bit of a two-way process much more so than your average interview would be because I think as well as Dan said earlier um, you want to find the right opportunity for you so it's an opportunity for you to interrogate the organization as well and see if it's a good fit, see if the values fit, but also see if the opportunity in terms of practically, is it going to fit? Is it going to fit around the other kind of uh, commitments that you have that you need to be able to take on? So from my experience in terms of running it, I think it, it should feel like a good and <laughs> friendly and comfortable process but I don't know if others from the other side have been through it I'm hoping that Dan thought it was but we'll maybe we'll find out in a minute yeah should I jump on from being on the other side of that interview yeah it <laughs> it's rare we get this <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was absolutely wonderful um so yeah no it's it's uh, look, I've jumped on, first of all, what, what Justin said there about it being a two-way process, right? It's it's 100%. You are going to be dedicating a lot of your time to it. And it's so important that, that is the right opportunity for you. I've actually, you know, been in an interview where um, previously, I don't know if I told Justin this, and it was for, for a charity uh, trusteeship. And I thought, you know, even if they said yes, I don't think I would, you know, I don't actually think I would want to dedicate, oh, this isn't right for me. It's a brilliant charity, but it's just not right for me. Um and so it's really, really important that, you know, you do get on and get on with the team. You know, these are the people you're going to be working with. Um, and if you have a team that are so passionate about the same values and the same work, I mean, there's nothing better. Um, in the actual interview itself, you know, I think there were questions. It, it was it was about your values, about, you know, why you've signed up, what you're hoping to get out of it. And then, yeah, touching a bit on sort of the professional experience and what what you as an individual can provide um, and can offer. Um, and, you know, I think the great thing about trusteeship is that, everyone has something to offer you know those sort of experiences are so unique to you and it's you being able to sell yourself to it if people are worried about sort of the interview process i mean there are loads of things you can do again if young people in particular the young trustees movement I've, i'll keep banging on about them but they offer loads of training for young people which is amazing and i think it's us sharing our experiences it's not daunting you know it was no i have i haven't had too many experiences of interviews in my time uni admissions and this and uh it was yeah, this one was the, the much nicer one. So, um, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, that's great to hear. Has it been the case for, for, for you guys as well? I mean, the, the other thing I would say um, is that um, with small charities in particular, um, 
don't assume that they've got processes in place because um, as Jen said, a lot of them won't have. Um, and, and, and it's actually a really big issue for charities finding trustees. And I think a lot of charities would like to be more diverse, but they don't really know how to go about finding trustees. So um, if you're interested, get involved and ask. You know, you may well find that if you say, well, I'm really interesting, I'd like to help. They might say, please come on the board, we'd love you, you know. Um, they're not you're not you don't need to wait to see an advert um or to be invited um there are so many charities out there who would be desperate for your help but they just don't know who you are and they don't know how to find you so it's almost like a two-way process for a lot of charities i would say and who does it tend to be who's actually doing the interviewing usually is, does that tend to be somebody from the charity? Does that tend to be other trustees? Can it vary? Because I always like to do a bit of internet stalking before I go through these sorts of things. So just so I just so I would know who who I should be looking up. I would, I I would think, guess, I would guess, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Go on, Jen. Yeah. I was going to say, I would, guess it, I would guess it's different in every charity. I think with some, it will be the board of trustees. With some, it will be a couple of them. With some, it might be the chair. Um, my experience was um, was just with the CEO um, initially. And then I went in for a chat with the CEO and the chair. Um, and, you know, I had a brilliant experience as well, just to, just to reassure people. It was really informal. It was very much an open conversation, a two-way conversation. And it is really about that fit. Um, and I think, you know, Dan's right in saying it's, it's not always going to be right for you as an individual either. So you just need to be honest about what you can offer and, and ask them to be honest about what they need. And, and if it fits, then great. And if not, then, then no hard feelings. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty informal process um, for me as well. Um, but I think, I think like organisations, the interview process will vary depending on the charity and, and, the, and obviously, you know, what they're looking for as well. But you can ask, can't you? You can get as prepared as you as you need to and ask what to expect. And, and you'll get a good sense of what the charity is and how it works just from those initial conversations, I think. If if that kind of really informal approach works for you and you've got a charity that's saying, well, do you want to come and have a coffee with our CEO and just explore it? Then that might be a really good sign that that's the kind of organization that you want to work with however you might feel that actually you want something that is a bit more rigid and is structured because that's the way you want to work and that might fit with you um and yeah there are so many different organizations that that do do things in their own unique way which is obviously it's one of the huge assets of the voluntary sector especially in manchester is the diversity and lots of organizations doing things in really different ways it presents challenges but it also presents some huge opportunities so uh, on, on that basis there is an organization out there that will be the perfect fit for you uh, in terms of your skills but also how you're engaging how you're working with that charity as well Wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, I feel like we've covered so much and the, the, these past 50 minutes have absolutely flown. If somebody was tuning in just at the end and you, the, the bits that you would want them to take from this hour, nearly an hour of, of content, what would be your main piece of advice for somebody considering a trustee role? And I appreciate I've just thrown this on you, so I'm going to let you come to me rather than put you on the spot. I, I think think about what you're passionate about and if you want to and if you're thinking about becoming a trustee then do your research because it is a big commitment like Catherine said um, and, you, and there's nothing worse than, than somebody becoming a trustee and then really not doing anything for that charity that's that's worse than not starting so think about it make sure that you're really committed think about what you're passionate about and make sure you go for the right opportunity and have self-belief and push yourself outside your comfort zone wonderful I, I i would yeah say absolutely similar definitely push yourself and and say i would say you absolutely do have skills and experiences that will add huge value to an organization and to a charity so whatever your background and whatever level you are in your career or whatever experiences you've got you will be adding value um, and there are organisations like Young Trustees, like Young Manchester and others who can support you to help find that right opportunity, but also provide you with the training and support to be able to make the most of what you, what you can. But yeah, 
absolutely go for it because there's, there's a huge there's a huge need out there and we need more people as many people as possible involved in the charity sector I think for me as well, it's about um, it's about getting a, a sense of purpose. You know, it really does give you, you know, the, the meetings that I take part in, you come away and you kind of like, that was brilliant. You know, that was the highlight of my week. And you've you've talked about things that you wouldn't usually talk about and you're involved with with a, such a diverse group of people. So I think it's, a, you know, it is a two way thing. You're giving experience and your advice, but you're also taking a lot away as well. So I think it's a you know you're you're driving passion into the charity but you're also I get a lot out of the meetings that I'm involved in and I never walk away from a meeting or start a meeting going oh no I've got to do this it's always like right let's do it and then you walk away and you're like that was great I always get a real sense of of satisfaction from you know whether it's watching one of the videos that the kids at hideout young people not kids sorry that the young people at hideout have have done it might be a cooking show or something when you end the meeting you're just like oh, that's great it's a highlight of my week so for me it's all about purpose and gaining something back yourself as well it's it's great oh i love that I think it does come to self-confidence because I think a lot, I don't know about the others, but a lot of the people who I meet who I'm like, you would make the most amazing trustee are often the ones who are most reluctant going, what do I have to offer? And it's like, no, you will, you would be amazing. So it's just having that self-confidence. I think like we've all talked about, it's something to, you know, it can be tough, but you know, definitely, you know, put yourself forward for it. Um, I think definitely do the research. Research is going to be so important. I think we've, we've flag posted quite a few, different um yeah different resources you can go to um there's some brilliant you, if you just type in charity trustee roles and then you know everything from guardian jobs to ncbo sort of pops up and you can then you know find out which ones are for you um but the most important thing there is is talking to other trustees i think that that can be really beneficial finding out you know going on talking you know before about you know searching and finding people well go on you know either linkedin or google and just find out who's on there who you know um and have a brilliant chat with them but i i do think passion and having you know finding a charity that maybe you've heard of or who you've worked with in the past through your professional experience or who you you know who you donate to i think you know would be fantastic because there's a there's a genuine passion interest there and like justin said i think that's the the first thing they're looking for oh wonderful stuff thank you dan and catherine have you got a last piece of advice for us yeah i think i think um that people have all as we say got something to offer and i think the charities really need you because there is a lack of diversity out there there are a lot of older people a lot of retired people and the obvious reason for that is they've got time and they've got money so they can afford to do it but you can give as much or as little as you you can afford to give um, and getting involved and being there is more important than anything. Um, and we're not going to have more diverse boards unless people who are from different backgrounds come forward. So please come forward and find your charities and get involved. It's oh. really, really worthwhile and you will get a lot more out of it than you're giving in the end. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I think, you know, if there's anything that could convince people of the value of trusteeships and how they should get involved, I think this was a really lovely conversation to bring in so many of those elements. So thank you all so much for sharing your experience and your expertise with us. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really hope everybody watching at home has enjoyed it too. Um, we are pushing out so much content through the Bruntwood Works Spark programme and it's everything from personal development right through to, um, you know, organisational strategy. So lots of free workshops, webinars, advisory sessions, whichever way that you like learning best, you will find it. And very soon we're going to be really excited to be uh, doing these live and in person and welcoming everybody back as well. So you can find details of that at 
www.co.uk forward slash spark and everything is listed. Next month's content is all about being re-released back into the wild, which, uh, you know, getting back into society and uh, brushing up on all, all of those skills will be, a, I think, a challenging one, but an exciting one for us all. Um, so thank you again so much for joining us today. Anybody that has signed up to this, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching this later on in your own time, I will also be sending you an email with a load of the links and resources that our panellists have mentioned today. So I hope this has inspired you to look at how you can make a difference and also, you know, how it can make a difference to you and your own personal development as well. So thank you very much and I hope you have a wonderful day.